Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the virtual SAS Global Forum 2021 conference and my presentation, Data-Driven Programming Techniques Using SAS. I'm Kirk Paul Laffler, and I've been a SAS user since 1979. I'll introduce popular programming paradigms. Then I'll describe data-driven programming with call execute. Once we do that, then I'll show you how to perform data-driven programming with user-defined formats. And finally, we'll look at data-driven programming with ProcSQL and the macros. Our example code and our example data set will be the sashelp.cars data set, which you all have access to in the SAS Help library in SAS Studio. It consists of 428 observations and 15 variables. An image of the first 21 observations or rows appears in this image. Let's start by exploring the popular programming paradigms. Programming languages are classified into one of three programming paradigms. Procedural programming, which is represented by blocks of code being organized logically by function, such as data input, data cleaning, data manipulation, output and results, etc. The second paradigm, object-oriented programming, is represented by a combination of functionality or behaviors and data and attributes inside an object which can then be arranged into classes. Finally, the third paradigm, data-driven programming, is represented by data controlling the flow of execution in a program. So what is data-driven programming? Unlike procedural programming languages and object-oriented programming, data-driven programs involve decisions and processes that are controlled by data. Why do we want to create data-driven programs? Data is used to define the control flow of a data-driven program. Data-driven programs can write other programs. Consequently, it often reduces the hard coding aspects of parameters and values, etc. It also can reduce programming and maintenance efforts giving us the ability to reuse our programs or portions of code which can translate into cost savings. Three data-driven programming approaches will be presented in this presentation. The call execute routine, user-defined in formats and formats, and finally PROC SQL and the macro language. Let's start by introducing data-driven programming with call execute. Call execute is a powerful data step routine that can be used to create data driven processes. The call execute routine accepts an argument where the value can be a character string or, when needed, a character expression containing SAS code elements to be executed after they are resolved. The call execute routine accepts SAS statements and macro code to be stacked together and then executed. The call execute argument is specified with single or double quotes, dynamically generating SAS code for execution. Two steps are involved in this process. First, create a control data set, and then process the call execute statements. In our first example, we're going to use the call execute to produce Excel spreadsheet results. Shown in this image, we see six distinct Excel spreadsheet results. Now let's take a look at the hands-on code for this example. Step one will be to create a control data set. We're going to do it in the data step and our data statement is going to control a temporary cars list control data set. We'll then input the six distinct car types using an in-stream data, data approach. And those six distinct car types are hybrid, SUV, sedan, sports, 
truck, and wagon. With step one completed, we're now going to process the multiple call executes. Step two is going to, in the data step, because the call execute is a data step type of routine, is going to specify a null process. And we're going to read the contents from our control data set in the set statement. Our first call execute statement is going to open up the Excel destination, assigning a unique name to each one of the different car type Excel spreadsheet files that we're going to create with the XLSXX uh, option or extension at the end of the card type spreadsheet. Styles equals style dot Barrett's blue, and we're going to embed titles. We're then going to add a title to differentiate one card type from another on the output. And then we're going to tell it we want to produce a proc freak a one-way table type of proc freak, assigning a dynamic where data set option to subset the distinct car type of interest. We're then going to specify a call execute statement with a table statement and the model variable or column, a call execute with the run statement, and because we opened up the Excel destination, we now want to close the Excel destination in a final call execute statement. The results are shown here. We have six distinct Excel spreadsheets, one for each one of the different card types. Now that we've looked at call execute, now let's turn our attention to data-driven programming with user-defined formats. To prevent hard coding value clauses, custom defined formats can be dynamically created from a SAS dataset. The format procedure is able to create in formats and formats without specifying in value, picture, or value clauses by using what's known as a SAS control dataset as input. The control dataset is specified with the CNT. LIN option or control in option of PROC format. To start the process, the control data set must have the following variables. A format name, which specifies the name of a character variable whose value is the format or in format name. Start, specifies the name of a character variable that contains the value to be converted. And label, specifies the value to assign to the converted value. One of the many ways to assign values to variables. An assignment of values with a user-defined format with a control data set. And using a format statement, a data-driven approach can be used to assign values to a two-way frequency table. In this data-driven program example, we're going to see how to assign a user-defined format to produce a two-way table using PROC FREAK. Let's take a look at the hands-on code for this example. Step one will be to create a control data set. We're going to use the data step to do this, and we'll call it work.control. Our first variable that we need to create and assign is the name of the user-defined format we want to create. We're going to assign that to format name variable. We're then going to assign a 13 character label and then the start variable, which will either be Asia, Europe, or USA. Then we're going to apply our logic. If start equals Asia, then assign Asian cars to label. Else, if start equals Europe, then assign European cars to label. And finally, if start equals USA, then assign USA cars to label. For validation purposes, we'll just display the contents of the control data set that we just created in step one. And we're going to specify the VAR statement, format name, start, and label, 
just to validate that we read in the data correctly and that the control data set contains the information we're looking for. Step three will be to specify the control in option with PROC format. Here we're going to specify the library equals work. That's where the control data set resides. And the control in and the name of the data set is control. Step four will be to specify the PROC freak with the format we created in the user defined format. In this case, we're going to use the table statement to create a two way table type by origin, and then assign the format we created, dollar $car underscore origin, to the variable origin. The result is a two-way table that's assigned using user-defined formats, all data-driven. Now let's explore data-driven programming with PROCSQL and the macro language. The SQL procedure and the macro language are two robust tools found in base SAS software. Iterative processes can be performed to create data sets, results, and output. In the next brief example, the process is triggered by calling a macro to reduce coding requirements, and then uses the macro language along with PROCSQL to create multiple SAS datasets. In this example, I want to show you how we can use PROCSQL and the macro language to construct or create different SAS datasets. Let's take a look at the hands-on code for this example. This data-driven process is going to invoke the symbol gen option so that we can validate the value that we populate for our macro variables. We're also going to assign a name to this little macro routine using the percent macro statement. We'll call it multi datasets. Using PROCSQL and the select query, we're going to use the into clause to create our first macro variable. Our first macro variable is going to be called mType underscore CNT. It's going to represent the number of unique type of vehicles that exist in the sashelp.cars. And we're going to use a count function to determine the distinct values for each type of car. The second macro variable we're going to create is called a value list macro variable. It is also specified with the into clause in the select query, but we're also going to specify the separated by keyword so that we differentiate one value from the next. And the separating value that we're going to use is a tilde or tilde character. This valueless macro variable is going to be displayed in alphabetical order using the distinct and then the type variable from the sashelp.cars. Continuing with this example, now we're going to leverage the macro language and the iterative process of the do statement, percent do i equals 1, percent 2, the number of values in the aggregate macro variable we created, amper m type underscore count, to iterate through this process as many times as necessary. In this case, the amper m type underscore count macro variable is going to contain how many times to iterate through this process. While iterating through this process, we're going to use the create table statement in PROC SQL to essentially scan the value list macro variable that we created, looking for the separator tilde. And each time the tilde is found, it knows that that is a separator. Consequently, the table that gets created, the first tilde will create a uh, data set for that particular data uh, type or that distinct vehicle type, etc. And it will do this, in our example, six times. Once it finishes with this looping process, this iterative process, it then 
terminates or ends the macro routine. Percent mend, multi data sets, and then whenever needed, we can utilize this macro routine, percent multi data sets. And the result, whenever we trigger or launch or execute this routine, will be to create, based upon the values found in the type variable in the cars data set. Let's now look at another PROCSQL and macro example. As before, an iterative process is performed to create now Excel spreadsheets along with results. The process creates a single value or aggregate and a value list or an array of values. And these are stored as macro variables. The process is triggered by calling a macro to reduce coding requirements and uses the macro language PROCSQL and the ODS Excel destination, along with PROCFREAK, to send output and results to Excel. Now we're going to look at our final example using PROCSQL and the macro language to construct three different Excel spreadsheets using traffic lighting scenarios. Let's look at the hands-on code for this example. First step we're going to do is we're going to sort our data in ascending order by origin of the vehicle and the MSRP, both ascending order. Then in step two, we're going to assign colors that we want to use in our background colors with PROC format. And we're going to choose green, blue, orange, and red for the four distinct colors. And we're going to use the value statement to create a user-defined MSRP format. Step three will be to create macro variables, just like we saw in the previous example. We're going to construct our macro routine. This time we'll call it multi-Excel files. The first macro variable we want to create using PROCSQL, the select query, is the mOrigin underscore count, which represents an aggregate for the number of unique origin values in the data set. Then we're going to create our second macro variable, mOrigin underscore list, using the separated by keyword, using the tilde again, to separate each distinct value from another. Step four, we're going to use the iterative process of the percent do statement to iterate through this logic as many times as necessary. Since there's three distinct origins, Asia, Europe, and USA, in the CARS SAS help data set, this is going to iterate through three times. Each time it iterates through, it's going to write the results to a new Excel spreadsheet with the extension XLSX, produce PROC report output with colors for the background, header information, applying our WHERE statement logic so that we can subset and make sure that only Asia vehicles exist in the Asia spreadsheet, only European vehicles exist in the European spreadsheet, and only USA vehicles exist in the USA spreadsheet. And we specify the columns we want in the each of the spreadsheets. And then we're going to compute our MSRP value if we need to. In this case, we're just assigning a foreground, a text color of white. Continuing this, now we want to leverage the MSRP format we created earlier with PROC format, and we're going to do this to assign a background color just for the MSRP value. So it's going to be based upon the four colors that we specified in our PROC format. And then we tell it we're going to end our macro routine, multi-Excel files, and then when we want, we can specify or trigger the routine by specifying percent multi-Excel files wherever we want. And the result is going to be three distinct separate Excel spreadsheets, one for Asia, one for Europe, and the, finally, the last one for USA. Concluding our presentation, we explored and introduced 
popular programming paradigms. We then turned our attention to data-driven programming with call execute, a data step construct. Then we looked at how we can construct data-driven programming techniques with user-defined formats and a control data set. And finally, we explored data-driven programming with PROCSQL and the macro language to construct an aggregate macro variable containing a single value and an array of values called a value list macro variable. I'd like to thank you for viewing my presentation. Again, I'm Kirk Paul Laffler, known as SAS Nerd. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions, either via email or I hope you will sit in my presentation and view it and then drop me an email after if you have any questions. Thank you again. And I'd like to thank SAS Institute and the SAS Global Forum Committee, Executive Committee and Conference Committee for asking me to present this presentation.